This video will explain temporal difference learning. Chapter 6 in an Introduction to Reinforcement Learning by Richard Sutton and Andrew Barteau. This video is a part of a series on Henry AI Labs, going through this book chapter by chapter, explaining some of the key concepts and ideas. Please subscribe for more deep learning and AI videos. Chapter 5 introduced the idea of model-free reinforcement learning, where we use Monte Carlo sampling to estimate the value function of a given state based on the returns that we achieve after visiting that state. In Chapter 6, we're looking at temporal difference learning, where we combine learning from sampled experience with the Bellman equations. The Bellman equations were shown where we can estimate the value of the current state based on the values of the states that we reach after taking certain actions and transitioning into those states, shown in these kinds of diagra backup diagrams of Bellman equations. We're going to look at different ways of trading off exploration and exploitation in temporal difference learning, like the SARSA algorithm, Q learning, expected SARSA, and then look at the double Q learning for solving the maximization positive bias uh, that happens in the Q learning algorithm. The key idea of temporal difference learning is to improve the way that we do model-free reinforcement learning or learning from experience. In chapter five, we saw the Monte Carlo update. In this case, we update the value estimate of our state by sampling an episode and then receiving this return G sub T. We then take the error of our return minus the value estimate of that state or the return that we had predicted we would achieve from that state. In temporal difference learning, we have the same value estimate of the return we expect from this state but now we're going to use bootstrapping, or this uh, technique introduced in the Bellman equations, where we're going to use the value estimate of the successor state to shortcut the computation that we need to estimate the value of the current time step state. And then we're going to subtract this from the value that we thought we would achieve from the state prior to learning from experience. With this idea presented, let's look at the full TD0, or one step look ahead uh, temporal difference learning algorithm. We're using this to evaluate the value functions given a certain policy. When we discuss characteristics of the different policies, we'll be, we're looking at things like SARSA, Q learning, expected SARSA, and double Q learning. But for now, we're just contrasting Monte Carlo and temporal difference learning for this task of evaluating the value function or the state action pair of values for a given policy. So what we're going to do is we take the policy, we're going to have our step size, which is how much we uh, update our value estimate at each sample. We're going to initialize the uh, value estimates of every state. Then we're going to loop through taking actions given by the policy for a given state. We're going to observe the reward in the subsequent state, and then we're going to update the value of the state based on the return that we achieved at that step, plus the discount factor times the value estimate of the subsequent state that we reach, and then we're going to subtract this by our original prediction of what we thought we would achieve from this uh, state. And then we're going to repeat this until the end of the episode. So for this reason, the backup diagram of the TD0, or the one step ahead uh, temporal difference learning algorithm, looks like this, where you start in state S, then you take an action A, and then you end up in state S prime. Throughout the temporal difference learning algorithms presented in this chapter, we'll have this constant theme of the temporal difference error, which is where we have the reward that we achieve at the time step, and then we add it to the discount factor times the value estimate of the subsequent state that we end up after taking an action in state ST, and then we subtract this by our original value estimate of that state. This is similar to ideas like supervised learning, where you might do things like the predicted Y prime label minus the uh, true label Y. It's just an idea of uh, having this delta T to update the values of the states as you experience uh, episodes. Motivate the differences between Monte Carlo and temporal difference learning through a driving home example and a Markov reward process. In our driving home example, we imagine leaving the office and predicting how long it's going to take us to get home. As we reach intermediate st states throughout our journey from the office to home, we're going to uh, continue to make predictions about the value of that state or the time that we expect to get home. In Monte Carlo learning, as we make these intermediate predictions, we're just going to put them all to the final g sub t that we achieve at the end of the episode. So this 43 minute mark is going to be set as the value of all these intermediate states after the sampled experience. Whereas in temporal difference learning, we're going to use our bootstrapping to update the intermediate predictions such that if we imagine a different type of episode where we don't get uh, stuck behind a truck, our temporal difference learning algorithm would be more able to uh, correctly update the value estimate or the time it takes to get home, whereas the Monte Carlo uh, sampled experience wouldn't be able to uh, differ between these kinds of nuances, nuances of the intermediate states and the impacts that they have on the final expected return. In our Markov reward process, we imagine starting from state C and then moving either randomly left or right, that's our policy, until we either reach this terminal state and receive no reward, or this terminal state and receive a reward of one. So in temporal difference learning, we see the convergence of the value as we sample episodes from zero episodes to one, 10, and 100 to getting close to converging to the true values, which would be one, six, two, six, uh, 3, 6, 4, 6, 5, 6, and then we see the uh, comparison and root mean squared error between the Monte Carlo algorithms and the temporal difference learning on this toy problem. Another interesting characteristic of our model-free reinforcement learning algorithms is that we can save our experience and then do something called batch updating where we go back through and loop through their experience to uh, iterate on our value functions until they converge. 
So we're now going to see a Markov reward process where the Monte Carlo algorithm converges uh, differently than the temporal difference learning algorithm in these batch updating kind of uh, updates. So in this case, we experience these episodes of A receive a reward of zero, then B zero, and the episode terminates. Otherwise, B one terminates, B one episode terminates. So this is showing you how these sequence uh, proceeds. So in the Monte Carlo algorithm, every time it experiences uh, the state A, it receives a return of zero. So it's going to attribute the value of state A to be zero. And then it's going to attribute the value of B as the average of these returns, which would correctly be uh, six eighths, even in our uh, temporal difference uh, algorithm. So this is the Markov decision process showing this overall framework, where we see that uh, the A state transitions you into B every time according to our experience that we sampled. And then the B seems to have this probability of either going to the reward of one or the reward of zero. So the A state really should have the same reward or value estimate as state B, but the Monte Carlo's way of estimating this doesn't converge to this value for state A. Similarly to chapter five, where we introduced model free and Monte Carlo learning, now that we're learning from our experience, we need to balance our exploration and exploitation. These are some of the different, al different algorithms of balancing exploration and exploitation with temporal difference learning. SARSA, Q-learning, expected SARSA, and then double Q-learning. Practically in these cases, we're interested in evaluating the Q functions, Q, S, A, rather than the value functions of states V, sub, uh, v of S. And this is because we're doing model-free reinforcement learning, where we don't have this dynamics function P, S prime reward given the state action, and we don't know how states transition into the next states because we don't have access to the environment dynamics. So for this reason, we're interested in evaluating the pairs of state actions because it, we have more control over this, and then we can use our uh, value estimates of the state action pairs to improve our policy. Whereas if we only had value functions of the states, we wouldn't even know how to navigate on these states because we don't know the dynamics of the environment. SARSA is an on-policy temporal difference learning algorithm that's going to use an epsilon greedy policy to balance exploration and exploitation. So the probability of epsilon will select the action that has the highest value estimate, but with the probability of one minus epsilon, we'll select another action from that, from that uh, state, from the actions that are available at that state. So SARSA is short for state action reward, next state, next action. So we can see how the uh, trajectories of experience have this structure of uh, the S of T, action reward, and the next state, and then the next action, and then so on throughout the episode. So what we're doing in our temporal difference learning update is we're taking a time step with the uh, Q function or the policy mapping the action, the state to action, and then we're doing the, we're randomly sampling an action from the next state that we achieve after taking this action in this state, and then we're going to bootstrap by using the Q value of this state, this new state action pair. This is the full algorithm for the SARSA on policy temporal difference control for estimating the value functions of state action pairs. So we'll start by initializing our state, then choosing an action from the state using the policy derived from Q, which is going to be epsilon greedy, meaning again that it's going to choose a probability epsilon, the uh, action that has the highest value estimate, and then with one minus epsilon, we'll randomly choose a different action. So it's going to take this action and then it's going to receive the reward and the next state. So now it's going to choose a next action from this next state again using the same policy from Q, which is epsilon greedy, and then it's gonna use the estimate of this next state action pair for the bootstrap update of the uh, original state action pair, and then it's gonna transition into this next state, into this next action to finish the episode. The Windy Grid World example shows how an epsilon greedy algorithm converges to a good policy, but not quite optimal. Because we're using an on-policy learning algorithm with this epsilon greedy uh, selection of actions, we converge to a maximal of 17 steps to solve the mapping from the starting state to the goal state with the windy grid world example, whereas the optimum policy was 15 steps because our epsilon greedy algorithm isn't always behaving optimally, even though it may have learned the optimal uh, Q functions given its exploration and estimation of the value functions. Now we'll look at the Q learning algorithm, which is very similar to SARSA, except for it's gonna be off policy with respect to the bootstrap uh, action it takes at the next uh, value estimate of the next state. So in the case of uh, SARSA, we're gonna take the next action from the next state with the uh, policy that we have, which is epsilon greedy. But in Q learning, we're going to take the maximum action that has the highest value estimate of that state action pair. So the Q learning algorithm is very similar to SARSA, except for the difference here, where we're going to, instead of sampling another action from our policy, we're going to take the uh, greedily take the maximum action with the highest uh, Q function for that state action pair. We'll motivate some of the differences between SARSA and Q learning with this cliff locking example where the agent starts at state S and then walks along the grid until it reaches the goal of state G. But if it falls into the cliff, it's going to receive a minus 100 reward. In the cliff walking example, SARSA outperforms Q learning because it's learning with respect to its uh, epsilon greedy policy. 
because it's an on-policy learning algorithm, it knows that its policy is going to make these random decisions and therefore should take the safer path around the cliff because it knows it might randomly take a down action that might result in falling off the cliff. But the Q-learning algorithm isn't learning with respect to its epsilon greedy policy. Rather, it's learning with respect to the uh, optimal action it would take when it's doing this bootstrapping uh, value estimate of the next state. So therefore, in this cliff world example, SARSA outperforms Q-learning. Another extension to SARSA is expected SARSA, which turns SARSA from on policy to off policy by rather than taking the maximum action in Q learning, expected SARSA is going to weight the Q value of each next state action pair by the probability of taking that action given that next state, which is determined by the policy. So this is a probability distribution of actions given the current state, and then you're multiplying this by the Q uh, value of each of these state action pairs, and then and then you're summing this up over all the actions, and this is what you're using for your bootstrap uh, you know, value estimate of the next state. In the cliff walking example, the uh, expected SARSA algorithm outperforms SARSA and Q-learning, shown in this uh, chart. In Q-learning, the temporal difference update, or the uh, bootstrap value estimate of the next state, it has a maximization or a positive bias because it's taking the action that has the current highest value estimate. And this is solved with double Q-learning. So in examples like this, where the mean value of the state B is minus 0.1 and A is zero, the Q-learning algorithm is gonna be biased to go into state B because it might have a positive value at some like uh, level of experience in this uh, sampling this episode. And therefore we need to overcome this positivity bias with double Q-learning. So the double Q-learning algorithm is gonna maintain two separate tables, uh, Q1 and Q2 of the state action pairs. And then with a uh, flip a coin probability, we're either going to use the Q2 uh, estimate of the Q1 taking the action. So basically you use the Q1 table to take that maximum action when you're doing the bootstrap step, but then you're gonna evaluate that state action pair with the Q2 table or vice versa, depending on which one you're doing. Thanks for watching this explanation of temporal difference learning. Chapter six in an introduction to reinforcement learning by Richard Sutton and Andrew Barteau. Please stay tuned as we go through chapters seven through 17, and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.